Let's see how it deals with the actual, the other values. Let's look at one. To get the negative of one, the binary representation of the negative one, then we would follow the rule. Here's our original value, zero, zero, one. We would flip the bits, making it one, one, zero, and then add one. So one, one, one. There's our one, 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 and that would be our negative one. Let's go ahead and do them all. Two is a zero, one, zero. If we flip the bits, it gives us a one, zero, one. If we add one, one, zero, one, 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 zero would be our negative two. Right here, and there it is. Of course, there's our two as well. Let's just do them all. Give myself a little bit of room here. Let's do three. So zero, one, one is a three. To get the negative three, we would flip the bits, one, zero, zero, and add one. So one, zero, one would be a negative three. And we, this last one is always going to be the smallest negative number in our system. In our case, it'll be negative four. And so that's two's complement. The, the, the representation of both positive and negative numbers using two's complement. Notice we go from zero to three on the positive side and from negative one to negative four on the negative side. There's a couple of things to notice uh, about this. And this is going to apply no matter if you're using a three-bit system an 8-bit system, a 16-bit system, or a 32-bit system. It really doesn't matter how many bits you have. There's some basic things that apply, apply across the board. Uh, let's look at the first thing. Negative 1 is always going to be all 1s. No matter how many bits you have in a 2's complement system, negative 1 will be all 1s. If we had a 16-bit system, negative 1 would be represented by 16 bits. Um, and a couple of other things. The smallest negative number, in our case negative 4, in our three-bit system will always be represented in two's complement with a leading one followed by all zeros. That'll be your smallest negative number, always. Your largest positive number will always be, no matter how many bits in your system, a leading zero followed by all ones. Okay? So some interesting things to note about the two's complement rep representation and how you can interpret these things at a glance, at least for some of the the uh, extreme values. Now, with that said, let's do a couple of problems and see if this thing actually works. So one of the other benefits about a two's complement system is that we can implement our subtraction and our addition as simple addition. This is a major hardware advantage because we can simply do everything with an adder. So let's take a look at a few examples. Let's just do an addition problem to start. Let's say two plus one. Keep it simple. Well, two plus one is three. And let's see what the binary equivalent in our two's complement system would be. Well, two is a zero, one, zero. If we add a one, we're going to add zero, zero, one, and we simply do the addition, and we get an answer, zero, one, one, or three. Not too exciting, uh, but it works. Let's see if we can do something a little bit more exciting than that. Not much more, but a little more. Let's try a simple subtraction problem. Let's say 3 minus 1. We know that 3 minus 1 is 2, but in 2's complement, we can simply add the representation of negative 1 to the representation of, neg of 3 and see, and we should come up with the appropriate value. So let's see if that will work. Well, 3, we notice, is a 0, 1, 1, and we're going to add the representation of negative 1. Negative 1 is represented as 1, 1, 1. So when we do this, we have 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, plus 1 is 1, 1. And 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. Now, um, we do have the carry, but we can ignore that because we have a 3-bit system. And this is our effective result, 0, 1, 0. And that is the expected result, too. So this seems to be working out pretty good. Let's do one where we come up with a negative number as a result, just to have something else to work with. Um, two minus three. Let's say, uh, let's do two minus four. Uh, two minus four. Two minus four we know is going to be negative two. Let's look at it in two's complement. 
that would be zero, one, zero plus a representation of negative four, which is one, zero, zero. And we get zero, one, one. Uh, I'm sorry, one, one, zero. One, one, zero is in fact negative two. So it works, it seems to work really nicely. Now, if you're thinking ahead, you've probably already thought about a scenario that could pose a problem with a situation like this. Let's look at a simple three plus two. On the face, it doesn't look like it's going to be a problem. We know that three plus two is five, but notice we don't have a five in this particular three-bit system. We have representations for both three and two, but we don't have a way to represent the number five in this particular system with two's complement. Let's see what happens when we add these two together. Um, if we do a three, it's a zero, one, one. We add a positive two, that's a zero, one, zero. And we get a one, one plus one is one, zero. And then we have a one. Now, if we were in an unsigned system, one, zero, one would actually be the correct answer. That's binary representation of five. But we're not, we're in a twos complement signed system. We don't have a representation for five. In fact, one, oh, one, zero, one is negative three. We know three plus two is not negative three. So something weird has happened here. We have to be able to acknowledge that something strange has happened and be able to report uh, some type of an error condition. How can we do this? What about this tells us that something strange has gone on? Well, it turns out it's pretty straightforward. Notice carefully uh, that we have added two positive numbers indicated by the leading zeros. Our result, though, is a negative number. That's our key. Anytime we add two positive numbers and come up with a negative result, we have what's called an overflow condition. And anytime we have overflow, we can report that as an error. We simply don't support the result of that operation. So two positive numbers coming up with a negative number is an overflow condition, and we can report that as an error. By the same token, we would get overflow if we added two negative numbers and came up with a positive result. Let's take, for instance, negative four minus three. Negative four minus three is negative seven, but we don't have a way to represent negative seven in our system. If we were to do this, we would get one zero zero plus one zero one, one zero, one plus one is one zero. Now remember the carry is ignored because we only have a three bit system and this is our effective result. But our result, uh, is a result where we added two negative numbers and came out with a positive result. This is an overflow condition uh, detectable by the system and can then report it as an error condition. And it's a nice way to just say, hey, we don't support the result of the answer of the of the operation you tried to perform. So two's complement deals with the two zeros problem. We don't have two zeros. It allows us to do subtraction and addition with only addition which makes it easier to implement in hardware, and it enable, enables us to detect overflow conditions so that we can report error situations. Well, there you have it, two's complement in a nutshell. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you'll join us again for another episode of Twirlybird Tips.